Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. So yes, today we have kind of a mix of drywall and cabinetry. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make a flush door with no handle. So something that we just push on, it opens up, and then you've got this access panel here. So it's a nice clean look. And if you can learn how to become competent with corner beads and have some basic know-how about cabinets, I think that most of you guys can pull this off. Now you're going to have to bear with me on this one because I'm in a really tight space. Like we have a door jam here, I'm in a stairwell. So I may have trouble getting good angles, but I will do my best to make sure that you guys don't miss any good information to be able to really pull this off well. So the first requirement for this is to have wood all around the opening and have the drywall flush with that. And then this is the side that the hinge is gonna go on. And so I added a little extra meat. I screwed this two by four in through the back. So normally your studs would be on the flat, so you'd have three and a half inches here, but I had to add something there. So the next thing you're gonna need for this is some kind of a corner bead. Now I'm gonna choose to use this straight flex stuff and it'll be a little bit more challenging for the install because I'm gonna have to make sure that it stays really nice and straight instead of goes wavy. First thing I gotta do is just get my sides cut right here and it can be just a little bit short, so a couple mils short, because the other pieces, the horizontal pieces, are gonna butt up to it. So give that a pre-crease, get it ready. And I'm gonna pre-cut a couple of pieces that are gonna be a bit long, but it's just to get them out of the box and ready and I can snip them once I have the other two in place. But it's just less work. When you're working with quick set, you want to avoid as many delays as possible. So I am adding a little bit of glue to the mud today, just to make sure that it sticks really, well that was probably more than a little bit. <laughs> That's okay, it'll really stick. And sometimes I'll even use my brush, something like that, to actually break up the globs of mud. Or usually I'll do it in like a, something I can shake. This wasn't necessarily the best way to do it, but it's gonna work. And right here, I got some 30 minute. So this is actually the homeowner's materials. He's got this little system where he puts the bag in a bucket and he uses a scoop. I kind of like it. Works pretty well. This is 30 minute, my water's a little bit warm, so it could kick off pretty quickly on me. Hopefully it doesn't set up while I'm in the middle of filming and ruin the shot. And thanks to Conrad for the new brush. Okay, that should be good. We got the mud a little on the runny side, which is perfect. Maybe just one more little spritz just for good luck. Because usually in about five or 10 minutes after working with it, it gets thicker. So you should start a little bit thinner. Okay, so I don't need to tape this, like these joints here, because the corner bead's gonna bridge that gap. So it'll be no big deal. And you may have noticed that the other side is wood and you think, Ben, you can't tape onto wood. And I would say under 99% of circumstances, no, you can't and shouldn't. Um, you can add drywall to the wood if you want, but this is one of those times, one of those few times where you actually can put the corner bead onto the wood and it's going to be okay. Don't really know how to explain exactly why it will work out and not cause you problems. I wish I could. I just know this is one of those rare times you can. Partly because it's going to get pinned down by a piece of trim that's going to set the reveal for the door, as you'll see in a bit. Okay, so the main thing that you really want to focus on here is that it's dead straight and dead level. The more level you get your bead, the easier it is to cut a door that fits nicely. I'm gonna wipe out the bulk of the mud, but not all of it. I'm just kind of getting some mud out of the way so I get less of it on my tools. Okay, so it has to be dead level. 
And it is, I mean, uh, to about a millimeter. Okay, so let's make it level. Pulling the bead out a bit. The more level it is, the more square your door is. And then the more square it is, the better reveals you get because you can just cut, you know, a rectangle instead of a trapezoid to fit. All right, that's gonna be good. I'm gonna wipe it out more firmly this time. And I'm making sure that it's sticking out past the drywall so that we have a little lip. All right, other side. You can also measure it too. Like once you get the first one in perfectly plumb, you can measure the second one to see if you have a totally um, parallel opening. Because so once that first one's dead set, then you're pretty good. I wish I could give you guys some better angles. Maybe I'll try and set up the camera a little different on the smaller pieces, but I'm pretty sure what will happen if I do that is you're just going to get some really good shots of my hair, like what usually happens in videos when I get the camera angle wrong. It happens a lot. One thing I didn't check was I didn't check how straight this was this way, and it's pretty good. If it's within a millimeter or so, half a mil, should be good. Guys, I'm gonna be talking metric in this video. I'm doing a metric challenge, challenging myself to work in metric for a little while. I shouldn't say that I'm blowing the, the sneak preview for the video. Okay, how straight is this? I'm just gonna go with plumb because if they're both plumb, the measurement's gonna be the same, provided your level is calibrated well. These Stabilo levels are good. I've been using the same one for years and it's never, never had a problem. It's had a few good drops. Okay, we're very close to level, but not exact. Not exact. Take your time on this, which is why quick set's annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna measure it now. Okay, what are we at here? Uh, 35 and a half. 35 and a half small, 35 and a half. So it's bellying the littlest bit in the middle here somehow, but it's really like about a millimeter. 35 and a half, counting centimeters guys, 35 and a half, 35 and a half. It's close enough. It's like within half a mil. That is definitely acceptable. That's like a 30 second. You're really not gonna see that, especially if you have, you know, about a two or three mil reveal all the way around. I don't know, I was gonna say an eighth of an inch, but I don't know what that is in metric. <laughs> Okay, okay, two down. Let's see if we can get these other two. Now that I have that installed, I wish I could get you guys closer, but I know by the time I set the camera up, what's gonna happen is the mud will start setting up, so I gotta keep working here. I'm sorry, that's why I need a camera person. Okay, that fits perfect. I had someone filming for a while, but you know, he had other things to do. Anybody in the Vancouver area <laughs> wants a job, there might be an opening. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. I need help. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit small, but I'll just have to go with it. Or I could cut a new one. Just cut a new one. Much better, much better. Okay, these ones have to be perfectly level too. Again, if you want a rectangle and not a trapezoid. Make sure your nosings line up perfectly. Pretty good, but that's better. Perfect.
Oh, I'm doing good. I think I can afford to change the angle here. Yep. It's definitely getting a little bit firmer, but it's not set up. So we're good. It's close though. Nope, it's kind of starting. It's okay. As long as you're still working with it, it doesn't set up too much, but what's in the pan will be setting up. Okay. So one of the reasons that this straight flex is gonna work nicely is that it doesn't have an actual nosing. So it's already flat, so I don't need to coat it. If I was using a regular corner bead, it's got this little nosing and that needs to be coated out because we're gonna be seeing about three quarters of an inch of this after. All right, let's check this one. Needs to come up or down. Come on. Perfect. Okay, we still got some life in this mud. So now I'm gonna do a little piece of fiber fuse across that spot that I'm always worried about cracking. The fiber fuse is better because it's really thin. So there's very little build out. It doesn't show as much as a piece of tape, a piece of mesh or paper tape. Okay, now that I've got those on, I actually am gonna do one quick coat on here. Who knows, maybe I'll do two, we'll see. It is still gonna make it a little bit better. It'll help the uh, piece of trim that we use sit a little bit flatter. So this stuff actually still isn't set up. I'm gonna just really quickly unload the rest of it onto here. I'm not doing like a nice job coating it, but I'm just kind of giving it a head start just to get rid of that extra material. Instead of pitching it in the bin, It's not taking too thick of a coat, too deep of a coat. So this will definitely get me ahead. Good enough. Well, unfortunately I got a little blister so I carved it out next to the flange and pulled the paper off. But right now we're at the magical state where we can kind of polish this stuff. So that's what we have to do. We'll fix this on my next coat. Basically right now I'm just knocking down all the high spots and getting all the crusties out of here. Just giving it a little bit of a polish. So I was planning on going straight to a finished mud at this point, but because of this little mishap, I went back to setting mud with glue in it again. So right now I'm just making sure to get as much as I can under this bead right here. So all that wiping is just kind of forcing it under then we should be able to get, you know, at least a half decent amount. So now we just throw a little piece of fiber fuse on there. Now we can just coat it all. Easy peasy, no problem. Get the eight inch knife this time.
Feather those edges. I want just a little more mud over that fiber fuse. That's good. So while this mud was setting up, I did all my measurements. So what I did was I got the measurements of the opening and I'm gonna put a three quarter inch MDF door in here. So if you're going Imperial, I took off a quarter inch to give me a one eighth reveal all around. So get your full measurement. Quarter inch off. For metric, you're gonna to wanna to take about six mils off, which is what I did, because like I said, I'm playing a little game with myself about metric. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna coat the inside of this off camera, and I think we'll give it another coat of finished mud tonight. Okay, this should be set up enough, yep. Time for a quick little polish. Nothing too much. We'll get a layer of regular mud over top of all this. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. In hindsight, this would have been better to do with regular corner bead. because I definitely have some spots where it's built up a bit too much. Regular corner bead goes on a lot straighter and it's easier to get that nose a little bit proud of the drywall so that you can get it coated properly. In this case, I'm actually having to build up this edge a little bit, which is kind of annoying and not quite as strong as it could have been. So in the past, I've always used regular corner bead. A little bit of an experiment on this one. Definitely, you guys, don't use the stuff on a roll. It's not as easy to do. I think it'll still be more than adequate, especially for where it is, which is just a little access panel in a stairwell. It's not like uh, a feature of some, you know, kind of weird built-in custom millwork. Feather those edges. Feather that like button. If you're getting something out of this. I'll probably skim this one more time tomorrow. It's not gonna hurt me. And it'll be a better finished product. That's looking good enough to leave until tomorrow. Let's get an up close look at it, hey? So it's almost good enough for a finished coat. Just a few little things like that. And I just know that if I sand this and skim it one more time, it'll be perfect. Instead of just maybe good enough. Okay, you guys, bit of a change of scenery. We're actually in my garage right now. I picked up a piece of 5 8 MDF last night from Rona. They have little 2 by 
four uh, pieces and that was the only size they had. I wanted three quarter, but five eighths will do. So I gotta cut this down to size and cut the uh, trim that goes around that the hinges are gonna attach to. And I got nice new Festool track saw to test out. This is the corded one. Okay, strips of wood. Three quarter inch MDF strips. You'll see what they're for. Okay, 349 by 740. I gotta check this corner for square. It's in good condition so we can use these two factory edges. Yeah, it's good, good. That is cut to size, hopefully the correct size. Okay, I've done about as much as I wanna do in here. Um, as you can see, I've made a pretty decent gym, but the workshop still isn't happening and I'm not ready to dust this place up right now. So I'm gonna do the rest of this on site. Okay, back on site. So first thing I wanna do, just break the edge so that it looks, you know, similar to what a corner bead is. Not going to hurt you to do both sides. And I will usually very, very gently round these edges too. The reason is a slightly rounded edge takes paint better than a super sharp edge. I mean, you think about it, super sharp edge, there's nothing there to hold the paint. So next I'm going to be using the concealed hinge jig, the Craig one. This thing's great. Link in description if you're interested. I have it set at five right there. I'm going to set it at three inches away from the edge, just using the little guide right here. This thing is the best. Three inches, last time I clamped it on here, I'm Going cowboy and just holding it. I would say for safety and accuracy, definitely a good idea to clamp it, but YOLO. Next up, time to do the hinges. So I have full overlay frameless cabinet hinges from Bloom. Link in description. If you're looking for them. I've also done videos about how to do this. It's pretty simple. So we've got the self-centering drill bit. It drills a perfect hole. Just careful not to go all the way through. Make sure you have the right size. I don't know what this one is. 7 64ths. The level helps hold them square. If you don't have good drill skills, use a screwdriver so that you don't send it too far. It's very easy to strip the MDF if you're not careful with these little screws. Just needs to be snug, not cranked down tight. You can't crank it down tight. As soon as you try, there's no real wood there to grab the screw. I'm not actually sure why I just installed these because I was planning on painting this thing. I guess I was just on a roll with the instructional of how to do the hinges. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to use a cove bit on a laminate trimmer. So there could be other ways to do this, but this is the most aesthetic way. What we need is we need to router out a chunk of this for a hand grab so it can be easily opened. So this is the part where we're gonna push on it and we'll naturally grab right here. So maybe just something like right about there. Doesn't have to be fancy or precise. Okay, now the fun part. So as we can see, it's got this rounded over bit. It's gonna leave a perfect little nook for your finger to grab. I'm only gonna go about halfway on the first pass and it's got a bearing to stop it from going in too far.
a little bit further. As long as you don't go deeper than the material that it's made out of, you should be fine. I'm pretty happy with this. So you'll definitely be able to grab that when you open the door. All right, next I'm gonna give this a quick coat with some shellac. No, I don't have a tray today. <laughs> we'll get it done anyways. I'm sure I could probably find one somewhere on this site, but I don't know, I'll have this done by then anyways. I don't recommend priming MDF with water-based paint. It really raises the grain. I'm only using shellac just because I had it on hand and it's gonna be dry in about 15 to 20 minutes so that I can continue working with it. But an oil-based paint would be just fine too. And nobody's gonna see this side, so let's just flip it over and keep painting. This is the side that needs to just look like a wall. I'll probably do two coats so that the thumbnail photo for the video looks good. So it just looks like a white wall with a little rectangle on it. You guys know what time it is. Time to sand drywall. And I especially want to make sure that I get this part real nice and flat. And I did end up having to build out past the nose of the bead. You know, you can even use your finger to sand that edge instead of the sandpaper and that'll give you a nice round edge instead of just like totally blowing it over with sandpaper. That's what I do sometimes. Okay, even though it's not perfect, I think I'm gonna give it a quick coat of primer. Um, this roller doesn't work, I just found it in a bucket. <laughs> it's not even rolling. Come on, it's working more like a paintbrush, but either way, I just want to get a little bit of paint on here. I may as well be using a paintbrush. Well, there it goes. Crusty. I don't know how long that's been sitting there. I just found it. This will just go a little nicer if it's got a coat of primer on it. Even left me a little paintbrush in there too. Look at that. Okay, you guys, I'm just gonna come out and say it. Using a random roller that I just found in a bucket on site and trying to prime my nice drywall work was a bad life decision. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing right now is I am marking this right here. It doesn't have to be super snug. I'm just making sure that it's gonna fit well. So we're gonna case around the inside of this. Yeah, definitely don't use random buckets of paint, even though they say drywall primer. It was old and crusty and not worth it. Okay. Okay, so next I need a couple of marks right here at 20 mils, which would be basically three quarters of an inch. Because I have five eighths material plus a little one eighth that's gonna be our reveal. And it would be a quarter inch, or no, one eighth bigger if I had been able to get three quarter inch material. Of course I damaged it with the back of the gun. So for this piece, I will be tacking it in place with the brad nailer. And then I'm actually gonna be putting some screws in because this one needs to be a little bit stronger. And obviously you just wanna make sure that you don't put any fasteners. 
where your hinges are gonna go. Mine are at three inches, so. That's pretty easy for me to visualize. The reason this side needs screws is because this one's gonna be holding the weight of the door. There we go. Good. You get too aggressive there, you could crack your beads as you're screwing it in, so be careful. And next we just need a couple of little pieces here at some odd metric number. 32 centimeters. 32 small. 319 was my other odd measurement. And don't force these either. Like that needs to be cut. If you force it, again, it could crack the beads by pushing them over. You definitely don't want to do that. Okay, this next part is gonna be a bunch of annoying measurements for me. I didn't do it the easy way. But basically, I've got a line drawn on here that is 37 mils away from the face of that. It's got the metric and imperial instructions on here. They both work really well. But the 37 mils basically is the distance from the face of the door to the center marks of this little plate on the hinge. Next, you're gonna want to know, if you did it the way I did, what your center to center measurement is on your hinges. So it's 585. And I also know that it is 77 mils plus a three mil gap. So 80 down from the top. And then I double checked it, it's 585 to both my marks. Now the easier way to have done this would be to have had this piece out and laid it on top of this door with the three mils overhanging each side and mark the center of where the hinges are and then installed this and those marks would have been there. I would have saved myself the headache. The point is there's just a bunch of annoying little stuff you have to do to get these marks out, follow the instructions on the hinges. And then what I'm gonna do is line up my centers with everything here. And then I'm gonna draw a little line right here where I need to drill, right here where I need to drill. pre-drill them. That one went off center a little because I'm doing it left-handed. Did the same thing on the bottom. Screw in my mounting plate. I'm gonna leave this one a little bit loose so that it can slide around a bit. I'm gonna snug up the top one right on my center. So the top one I am going to snug right up so that it can't move. And now the moment of truth. I'm gonna pop this door on and see what happens. So the reason I left the bottom one slack is so that I can mess around with it if I have to. It all needs to go up, so I'm gonna adjust that real quick. I am not a mill workshop, so I never expect this to be perfect on the first go. That's why there's all sorts of adjustments you can make on the European hinges. When I say not perfect on the first go, I mean I don't expect the adjustments to be totally perfect. You're gonna have to tweak it to get it right where you want it. That could take a bit. Okay. Hey, we're looking pretty good. The main problem is that I shouldn't have used that um, corner bead on a roll because I didn't do as nice a job on these corners as I normally do. That was another life lesson learned. 
But now I'm going to tweak this and put a magnet latch on it. If I can open it, there we go. The last thing I did was install the magnet catch. As you can see, it's flush with the jam. It should be out a little bit more, but I found a solution for that. I just put a little rubber bumper on the magnet. We don't actually even need the magnet so much as just the little push latch. Maybe there's another piece of hardware I could have used, but the little rubber bumper does the trick. The reason we don't need the magnet is because the European hinges hold the door closed already. But now we can just go like that and we have the little nook there that I made for your hand. Open it up, easy peasy. Okay, so if we get up close and personal, we can see that that bead was causing me grief. Never should have used that bead on a roll. But otherwise, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's almost totally flush. The reveal is pretty consistent. Gets a little bit narrower right there. Just gonna have to live with it or get out the belt sander. But overall, I'm happy with it. The opening and closing is working very nicely. There's the hinges. It's a simple system, but it works. And you guys, it doesn't have to be just like unfinished behind here. So if say you just have like a two by four wall or a two by six wall, you could make yourself a little cabinet, like a medicine cabinet or something. And you know, it's not too hard to figure out, like just build the box with the door, know your dimension, and then create an opening with corner beads that you slide it into and screw it into. Like it seems complicated, but it's actually not that hard. And you can make like a little flush panel medicine cabinet. So yeah, that's it. That's how I make these things. Um, I'm 90% happy with it. I'll be a lot happier with it once I tune up these corner beads. And I'm happy to be able to share this with you guys. You know, being able to do this kind of thing for a customer is one of the things that can really help wow them. So, you know, if you add this to your skill set, I guarantee you, you're going to find work. So hopefully you guys are doing well. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you get some awesome flush panel doors should you choose to tackle one. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope your project's going well and I hope you're doing even better because, you know, I hope you're doing well, even if your project is doing horribly. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you are not your work. Uh, yeah, that's enough. That's enough Dr. Phil for me. Time for me to go before I say anything else. Till the next one, you guys.